Hello friends, it's Tony Ackerman here. April 16th, 2020, over a month into the quarantine here in the Czech Republic where I live. It's a beautiful spring day out there in my village. The buds are just popping out. I'm well, and I hope you're well too. But wow, what a situation we're all in and it happened so fast. If you've been feeling overwhelmed, as I have, every day, by these cascading feelings of fear, sometimes panic, of confusion, disorientation, of sorrow, of, of grief for those on the front lines risking their lives, the medical workers, the cashiers in supermarkets who don't have the luxury of social distancing as some of us have. Well, that's normal for all of us. But I'd like to share with you some ways that I have found to ride this avalanche in the midst of this crisis. Helps me to look at each one of these every day and I get more of a feeling of inner strength, of gratitude, of, of even joy. I'm calling this Tony's Crisis To-Do List. It has five items, and for each one of these items, I'm going to call on one of my guitars to help me say it better. Item number one, develop a mind-body practice. Maybe you have one already. Meditation, yoga, one of the martial arts, or some form of dance, or even exercise. But the key here is to have a dependable, time-tested ritual that you can go to every day that'll do a couple of things. First, it's got to take your attention away from that obsessive, overthinking mind into the relative calm of our physical body. And the second, very much connected, is to get you right here into the present moment, a place we usually aren't. Now, I've been practicing meditation for over 40 years, and I'm so grateful to have it as such a support at this time. And if you're new to all this, I highly suggest secular mindfulness meditation. For one thing, you're going to feel results right away after a couple of sessions. It's very user-friendly. And for another thing, it's so available out there, it's become really big in our culture. Mindfulness teachers have really stepped up in the last few weeks. And it's all over the media, so I'll suggest a few of my favorites. On YouTube, you can get daily videos from 10% Happier, from Mindfulness 2.0, the talks and meditations of Tara Brock or of the holistic medicine guru Deepak Chopra. And of course, there's always the wisdom of one of my favorite enlightened beings, Eckhart Tolle. Item number two, limit the intake and sharing of frightening news. Of course, in this time of fear and uncertainty, 
we're going to be drawn to the news. As soon as we wake up in the morning, and all day, clicking and clicking. And then when we talk with our friends, what is it about? The virus, the havoc, the deaths, the impending economic disaster. Of course, it's important to keep informed, but it also helps to know this secret. Nobody really knows anything. And you know, this was true even pre-virus, but now it's come out in all its nakedness. The news is full of speculation, catastrophization, natural under the circumstances, but certainly not helpful in developing a wise and courageous mind. So when I talk with family and friends, of course, those, there's those few, first few minutes of virus stuff. But then we say, stop. What did you do today that was nourishing, that made you stronger, that made the world stronger, that was calming? So come back to the present moment. You'll find it's not so bad. Item number three, get physical. <laughs> Wash the dishes slowly, feeling the soapy water, enjoying the shine of a clean pot. Plant micro herbs on the windowsill. Redo and dust the bookshelf. You'll find a lot to read that you didn't know you had. My next project is those bins of screws and washers and unidentified parts of old gadgets. First I'm going to take them out and lay them out in a nice tableau and take a picture. Then I'm going to throw most of them away and organize the rest. I haven't done this in about seven years, so this is major. It's possible for you to be outside legally and safely. Go there, take a walk, a bike ride. Breathe that outside air. Item number four, express gratitude. Gratitude, what a beautiful and centering emotion. And easy to find. Each morning I try to remember to say thank you to every single item I come in contact with. My pillow, each item of clothing, my teapot, and sometimes I'll make a gratitude list. Some things I love about being alive on planet Earth. My dog, Sophie. Blue sky. Gray sky. Night sky. Try it. 
tell people what they mean to you. Bow to your bookcase. Bow to your kitchen sink. It's such an easy way to settle right here into the present moment. Item number five, reach out. It's interesting, I've heard from so many folks in the last couple of weeks, how in the midst of this physical isolation, they're more in contact with friends and family than they've ever been. Here's my last resolution, which I invite you to share. Every day, reach out to someone that you haven't talked with in a long while. Maybe even someone with whom you've had some difficulties in the past, or someone you know who's more affected by the present crisis than you are. I never thought I would be so grateful to Zoom and FaceTime. Here are the five items in review. Develop your mind-body practice. Limit your intake of disturbing or frightening news. Get physical. Express gratitude. I'm going to end with the words of meditation teacher Tara Brock. If you are intentional on how you want to move through this, the suffering that arises can turn you toward your deepest resources. Can we feel the intelligence of the fear, but know how to hold it with awareness and compassion? May this suffering Awaken this heart and all hearts. May it help love grow viral.